In today's video, we are going to be doing a wheel bearing replacement on the front for a 2014 uh, Toyota Venza. Uh, this is like a two-wheel drive, so it shouldn't matter. So, um, pretty straightforward process. Now, you either can do this on the vehicle or you can do it off the vehicle. Let's see. I think I'm going to do it while it's on the vehicle. Um, we'll just probably move the CV axle out the way and so forth. Um, I might change it up. I might take out the whole spindle. It just depends on what I feel comfortable with, uh, with the tool and all that. Um, just trying to show you how to do it. Um, so you can either do it on the vehicle or off the vehicle with a hub tool. Um, you can rent that tool from AutoZone. To rent it is $400. Um, you go ahead and do that as a deposit, and then you will get your money back when you return um, the tool. So pretty much straightforward. Um, you are going to need a 21 millimeter to take uh, the lug nuts off. I uh, didn't want to show that. Just trying to skip some time. Straightforward. Uh, jacking up points. Um, let's get down to it. Um, best jacking up spot would be right here. Or you can actually do it at the, the bolts. Um, so depending on either side. Basically this is the same side as over there. And then put a wheel chuck on the front and the back of the wheel so forth um if not you can actually lift it from right there this little notch right here but you'd be lifting up both wheels but again make sure you have a um, chuck on both sides of the wheel and then for jack stands you can actually put the jack stands right here do not jack it up from right here it's really not the best spot um to jack it up from it's only meant for lifts and over time when you are jacking it up with a jack you will destroy the pinch wells and then it just makes it more difficult when doing repairs for the next person or lifting it up uh, if you haven't already give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and then we're going to go ahead and start this video right after the intro So um, we are going to need a 30 millimeter socket. Now this needs to be 12 point. Um, part number for that is 24714. Now you can have the individual socket, um, which is that, or you can actually have, you can go rent this socket set. Um, part number 57321. Now this is the 12 point set. Now this comes with everything, but we only need just the 30 so um the moment i actually went to go rent this i found my socket so i was pretty bummed out um on that so it always happens like that all right so 12 point so make sure we get that nothing else unless if it has a, unless if this axle has been replaced um if it has it's most likely either a 30 mil or a 32 all right so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna sp spray a little penetrating oil Um, get that going so it makes it easier for the actual nut to come off. Now, let me get this guy zoomed in. So right here, we actually need, I'm going to reuse this. So um, we actually need to take care of the actual axle. And I can't find my cold tissue right now. Can't find anything right now. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and hammer. I'm just don't care about this actual screwdriver so what i'm doing is i'm trying to take off the notch from here so when we loosen this guy right up is that we don't destroy the thread so we, we don't have to get a new axle all right so we're going to go ahead and take this off now if you don't have an impact one, um what you can do is let's get back over here you can actually put a screwdriver actually right here and it'll stop in between the fins um, and so forth. So um, you can loosen it up like that. Inspect the threads. Let's check them out. Because we're actually going to reuse this axle nut. And so threads look fine. Nothing looks destroyed. So we're going to go ahead and reuse that. Um, let's go ahead and if this can be pushed out. Um, what you're going to do is spray some penetrating oil inside here, and then you can either get a cold chisel and hammer into the center punch, or 
you can put this nut back in here and you can put it almost all the way and then we'll put our socket back here and then you'll hammer this piece right here um, so forth so just so you have an idea all right so before we kind of take anything else off so I want to make sure you guys understand this um, we don't want to fully extend the cv axle because then we can pop it out from the joint and if we do do that um we just you'd have to kind of push in the actual joint so that's why we want to take off the actual nut first and make sure that this is free if you don't care about the axle and you're going to replace it then who cares um all right so next step what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and pop this little clip right here and then we're going to go ahead and take off the um, actual abs sensor And that is gonna be a 10 mil. And so we'll go ahead and just spin the sensor out. If it doesn't come out easy, it should. You can spray some penetrating oil on it. And then we'll just put back our little screw so we don't lose that. So I'm gonna turn the wheel as much as possible. And then we're actually gonna take off the whole um, bracket assembly. And I think those are 17s. Yeah, those are 17 mils. And then we're gonna go ahead and take off this 12 mil right here. Um, so, and then I'm gonna get a little caliper bracket holder. You can get these little S shapes on Amazon, super cheap, so worth it. Um, so let's go ahead and take that off. All right, so we got both bolts. We're gonna go ahead and sit down the rotor. And then I'm just gonna put this little guy right here. Actually, I'm gonna flip it the other way. And then we have it sitting just like that. Now, in the meantime, if you do go in the vehicle, do not press the brakes. Because if you do, well, you'll just end up popping out that the caliper. All right, so next step, do this is like really a straightforward process, nothing crazy. Take out your bolts. Um, we are gonna take off our um, our strut bolts. So, so we're gonna take off our little nuts right here on this side. Um, those are 22 millimeters. Now, if the other side's spinning, um, just get a 22 mil or some pliers. All right, so before letting this retract all the way out, remember how I told you, we're gonna go ahead and push this as we're letting this slide right up on out. Now, we wanna keep this off at all times. Now, I don't know why you're being such a stubborn sucker. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of just tap. This did get stuck a little bit. And there we have it. We can hear the bearing. Yeah, this thing's shot. I can just hear it and feel it. Um, do I want to do it on here? I think it'll be better. Let me. I'm just gonna take it off just so I could show you guys. I can do it on here. Um, yeah, I can, I can do it on here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off just so I can show you, so just in case, in your situation, um, so you guys can get a better um, view. So, we're gonna go ahead and take off our lower ball joint, and then we're gonna take off our tie rod. I wish I would've just taken this guy off. 
in the beginning. Um, hey, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and take this guy right off right here. We're gonna take off this cotter pin. So we're gonna just gonna grab some pliers. Literally, I can't find any of my tools today. Just trying to find some, some next tools. So let's go ahead and get this. So what we want to do is just get this pretty straight. And then kind of tap it out. It should be on the other side. And at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and do this one right here, the one on the back, the tie rod. And I could just pop this one out pretty easy. So I pop this one out that's over there. Where's the old house? All right, so we got this guy out. These are called cotter pins. You can buy these at the auto parts store. I'm not going to reuse this. So we're going to go ahead and take off the ball joint. That is a 19 millimeter, and then the tie rod is a 17. God, that sucker's actually on there. Usually these guys aren't even on there that tight. Or you know what? We could have just taken off the three bolts on the bottom. I didn't even see that. I think we'll just do that. What size are those? 14. So instead of taking off the the ball joint. I'm actually just taking off the I'll show these guys right now just so over this so these are the three bolts that I took on for the bottom they're 17 millimeters um, no need to take this guy off, but still did. Um, and then we're going to take off our tie rod. And then we're going to leave on this nut because we're actually going to bang on the knuckle. So we're actually going to get this over here and we're going to bang on it. All right, so we got that, and I'll show that right now, what I was doing and how I hit it, because I don't know if I was blocking it. So, I was hitting right here, I was tapping right here. Now, sometimes it's actually a lot more harder than what I made it seem. Um, and then I just tapped on the bottom of this guy. Do not tap on the nut and keep the nut on there. So, and then it comes off like this. So we're gonna go ahead and put back, well either way the ball joint's bad on this, so, eh, eh, whatever. But yeah. So, we're gonna save this ring. Um, we don't need to destroy it, but sometimes they will get destroyed. So, we're gonna go ahead and get a flathead. Now sometimes these guys, we're just kinda just wedging ourselves in here. So, we gotta really just, kind of work our way now what I'm doing is I'm putting right here like on the on the edge and I'm just working my way up just like that so if you hammer it in you're gonna destroy this and we want to save that um, 
So now we have a snap ring that we need to take off. All right, so let's just clean up our area so you guys can see this. We're gonna go ahead and reuse our snap ring too. Just trying to be as cost of effective as possible. All right, so I'm using an Icon snap ring set. Um, doesn't have to be somewhat decently fancy. Um, all right, so let's see. Now we wanna kind of grab some pliers that don't have the spring and that are closed like that. So we can actually get the snap ring. Now you might need to do this a couple times. So they keep snapping back. What you can do is put a flathead. Now just be careful with your eye. So we got it out. So and at this point, we're just gonna kind of work ourselves around. And then there we have it. Snap ring is still in great shape. We're just gonna clean this guy up and then just move it out the way. So it's better off to clean it right now if any grease, whatever. So it's not as dirty when putting it back together. So it's not full of debris. All right, now at this point, we are ready to take off our hub. Um, and let's get the hub tool. Now here's the hub tool that I was talking about that's $400. Um, part number is 27342, um, master wheel hub and bearing remover and installer kit. It's a perfect kit to have. It has mostly for all the vehicles. Um, so let's go ahead and get this going. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use this nut. This nut is actually gonna sit, um, yeah, it'll sit right here. Let's see how that, no, it's too big. So yeah, we'll just basically use just this nut to take it back and let's flip it on the other side. Now when doing it this way, you might bend the dust shield in certain ways, but we'll don't worry about that, we'll bend it back in place as much as possible um now we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy so let's see just take off the nut all right so this one's gonna be a perfect set i don't need to make any adjustments right now i think to have it on this side will be perfect because we want this to rest on both of these bolts um now the adapter is gonna be, I think it's an E. So, the next nearest smallest one. This is gonna be the smallest one. So, this is gonna be the smallest one, but it looks like an F or an E. Really hard to see in that, but we'll have this right here. So we wanna sit it where the caliper is actually on. All right, so now, We'll have that go through there, and then we'll have this in here. Now you can do this by hand, trust me, you can do this by hand, but I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna be working out, so I ain't doing that. I have the gun, so we're gonna use the gun. Um, I believe you need a 27 millimeter, and as long as you have a adjustable wrench on one end, you'll be fine. I think I said 27 millimeter, but it's actually a 24. Um, or you can use a 15 16 and then we got our adjustable wrench So I'm just gonna snug this guy and get it all centered All right looking good now When doing this you want to make sure that this stud is centered as possible um, So you don't damage the splines on there. So let's go ahead and Take this bad boy off so I'm tightening the gun. I'm using a Milwaukee 1400 pound torque gun. And just like that, with these, I look like a champ. And then we're gonna go ahead and back this guy off. So we'll take this piece off.
So what happened here, I think is what happened was the plastic went out. That's why we had a growling sound. All right, so next one, what we're gonna do, just trying to see where we can punch this. So get a flathead and just pop out these bearings. Just destroy this whole piece right here. You don't need this. So just pop this out. All right, so we're gonna get the little spline thing right here. So we're gonna get one of these little adapters. Um, we wanna make sure it's maxed out as much as possible. What is this? M, and that's L. All right, so I'm gonna be using adapter M on this. And then for the other side, uh, we shall be using, that's a great question. I'll use a cup, if that. So I'm gonna be using spacer U. I'll just have it seat in like that. And then I'm gonna be using adapter support plate H. And that'll just be right there. Now we need to make sure this is fully seated properly. Um, just like that. And then we're just gonna get the stick of this. Let that sit right through. Now right now, we're not gonna worry about it being perfect. We're just gonna make sure this is flipped in like that. And I'm gonna go over here. All right, so we're gonna snug this down as much as possible. Make sure we're centered. Looks pretty decent. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten away. We got that guy out, worked that really great. And now let's go ahead and take this off. Now save this piece. Um, this guy is right there. Obviously, let's see if we can pop this out. Take the back of something. We got that out. All right, so right here, go ahead and inspect your area. And we need to clean it. Um, so if it's rusted, just get like a little Scotch Brite or like an 80 grit sandpaper. Um, I think I have like some 600. If you have, we just need to clean this up so it's very nice and smooth when installing. This car doesn't have that many miles on that. All right, so I'm just trying to get out all the gunk, get us at the little race where the snap ring goes. All right, so we are looking good. And well, let's just kind of give it a little look. Now, if I wanted to, I could send that, but I'm just gonna kind of clean up a little bit. So just make sure you get some sandpaper. And I think 80 grit's pretty good. You're just gonna do it by hand, clean up the area, and so forth. All right, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using 220. So if you're able to find 220, that'll be fine too as well. So let's just kind of clean up the area like this. And then you just want a nice, smooth surface. So we are, all, that's pretty much all it does take to clean. So it's really not that much. And then you're just gonna get some brake cleaner and wipe it down. 
um, put some brake cleaner on the rag and then clean up the area. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll get back to the video. All right, so we got it all cleaned up and I'm gonna be using um, some wheel bearing grease. So uh, right here, I'm just using some STP and then we're just gonna kind of seat this around our area. And then the reason why we're doing in, doing this is just when we install the bearing, it'll really make it easier for to forgive any like ain't going in cro crooked or anything and it makes it so much more easier it's better in it, there's a saying it's better going in wet than dry that applies to this all right so we are going to go ahead and put in our wheel bearing So here's your wheel bearing right here. Um, there's really no right or wrong way. Um, if there is a magnet on this, uh, what you can do is you can get some sort of bolt. And then you can put it right there. If it sticks, if it's catchy, then you know that's the magnet side. Um, so we don't have that issue um, So it doesn't matter. So we're gonna go ahead and just seat this right here now best way to do this is To use your old wheel bearing to seat it in if not That is no biggie we can actually um, Use I think it's, is it? We can actually use adapter step O. Um, now I don't want to use that one. I do want to use this guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this and then get everything out of there. So I'm just going to use this guy right here. Now I just want it as clean as possible. And then we're just gonna have this in like that. And then we can have this guy like that. So either way, it just makes it more easier for me just to do that. And then I will have the gun upside down. And this needs to be like super straight. And I'll deal with this later. And then right here, God. So right there, we're gonna have the this adapter. And then that's gonna stay like that. So Now, I'm gonna snug this in as much as possible. Wanna make sure you're pretty straightforward centered. You want the wheel bearing as centered as possible. And we are gonna pretty much hit away at this. So the reason why I like doing it up and down is just because I'm gonna be going pretty fast and I'm gonna be using the impact gun, but literally you want that to be as flat as possible, just like that and so forth. So let's go ahead and do this. So the way how you know when to stop is when you can hear the noise difference or you can retract. Um, but when the other bearing's about almost halfway right there, then you're pretty much done at that point. And then you can kind of back it up and then peep and see if you're max or you're, you're maxed out and you can't go any further. 
All right, so we are gonna lift up, let that slide right out, and there we have it. So what I'm gonna do for the excessive wheel bearing grease, I'm gonna grab this guy and I'm just gonna just throw it right up in here. No need to waste it. So. All right. And then we'll just, I'm gonna cover this for right now so it doesn't collect any dust. I'm gonna grind out the other piece and we're gonna show that. All right, so next step, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna be cutting the race um, on this. Now, we're, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna cut it at an angle and then you need a cold chisel to hammer this out. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So at an angle, so I'm gonna cut diagonal and not straight because if you cut straight, you're actually gonna cut into this guy and then we're gonna have issues. So cut at an angle, that's the best way to do it. And I'll show, I'm gonna do two cuts. So one on opposite sides. Now, if you go through here, it's not the end of the world. Trust me, it's not the end of the world. So, um, but if it's it's a pretty gnarly gnash, then I mean, we might have an issue, but just try to keep your distance on that. And I mean, you don't wanna to cut too much metal, but yeah, so let's go ahead and knock this out. Make sure you have your safety wear, so forth. All right, so you're gonna need some cold chisels, just like this, and then um, obviously the hammer. All right, so just so you guys, we look at this, um, here we got our incision. I did go a little bit deeper than what I should have right here. Let me get that zoomed in. So right there in that middle, I went down deep. And for right here, um, I think I went down just a hairline too much on this. So I'm not gonna chisel this side. I actually wanna chisel this side because this one actually looks a lot more better. So I'm doing this on a piece of wood. Um, shoot, let me, I'm gonna do it like this. Let me get on the other side. And then we shall do that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hammer and then you should hear a crack in that one. Did it already crack? Nope. So it'll crack and you'll see a hairline crack and then there we go. So once you see that hairline crack, let's zoom in just like that. We are pretty much ready to pop it off. And then what we can do is we can just, just hit this at an angle. All right, cool. Now you're gonna see this little lip ring. Now this little ring comes off the, um, comes off the, the wheel bearing itself, so that's trash. And then right here, we have a couple nicks. Um, again, it's not the end of the world for these little nicks. So we got one right there, one right there. So um, this has been done before. Save this guy, we're gonna reuse this just to seat in this piece to hold this guy in. Well, not this piece for the other inner race. Um, and now let's go ahead and go back to the area. All right, so we need to get this area cleaned up. Um, we are gonna be, just kind of wipe it down real quick. And so forth. So grab our sandpaper and then we'll just clean up that area. All right, so we're gonna get some brake cleaner and just clean up the area just like that. Now we're gonna kinda get some um, grease and just I 
overkill it with grease. I just want to make sure we're pretty dialed in on grease. All right, it's a little thin coat. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and seat this right here. Now you do not want to hammer this in. You want to just seat it in like that. We'll go ahead and get this guy. And we can keep this guy on. So we'll keep washer, step washer O on here. And then we're going to go ahead and get our race, clean this up. Just have this all nice and cleaned up. All right. And so we're actually just going to sit this right here. Just like that. So when this gets seated, we are pretty dead on that. Um, or you know what? I wanna actually have something more in control. Well then the lip becomes smaller. Well, I think we should be fine like that. So I'm just gonna have that. We're just gonna pay attention to that. so forth we should be golden on that um actually i'm gonna put the stud on the other side and then we shall put let's see what we're gonna put on the other side so we need to put um i think the one step down will be step washer n as in november then we'll put our stud right here, get that going, and then we'll flip this guy right upside down. And then what we want to do, uh, the reason why I have it this way is because I want to pay attention and make sure that little washer doesn't fall off. And we want this as straight as possible. So make sure that that... So this guy... This piece right here needs to actually be on this inner side right here. Don't have it on the outside or anything like that because you will damage it. So this is actually the little center part actually keeps this from breaking apart. And that's why we're putting that there. Um, so we need to make sure that's pretty centered as possible. Oh, I'm actually skipping a step. We actually need the snap ring. Woo! Getting ahead of myself. So, we're gonna go ahead and seat in the snap ring. Now, there's really no wrong or right place to put that in. So, let's go ahead and get this guy going. All right, perfect. So we got that in. Let's not forget that step. Let's get that guy right there. Let's get this guy right there. Let's put this washer in right there. Now, I don't have the really best angle. I'm sorry. I'm really trying my best. So make sure that this is centered. along with the little race. Now with the little race, what we can do is we can actually get something inside and just kind of poke away at it with a screwdriver. All right, so we are pretty ideal. We're just like a hairline off. Uh, but I'm not pretty worried about that. Now, I kind of want to show you guys what I'm seeing. So I'm going to get that kind of zoomed in. So that's what I mean by hairline off. Um, so, but as long as I'm pretty close ideal on that, I'm pretty good on, I'm pretty happy on that. So 
it's pretty off, like pretty bad, then we're gonna have an issue. So let's. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten away. All right, pay attention to the sound. Went pretty smooth. All right, so next step, what we need to do, you need to spin this. Feels nice and smooth. All right. So next thing we need to do, we'll just clean up our area. Uh, you can actually put some grease right here. So this keeps the actual CV axle from sticking to the actual hub itself. And then makes it easier if you ever need to replace this. Now this little notch right here needs to go where the actual little speed sensor is. And then we'll just hammer that in. Um, let's see. All right, so we got that guy in, and that's pretty much it for that. And so we're now we're gonna start putting back everything together. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and seat this guy right in. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna actually put in everything kind of like all together at once. So let's push. Down. All right, so let's just keep this guy right there. So we're gonna go ahead and put on the three bolts on the bottom. Are the two nuts and one stud. That's kind of like down right there. So next, what we're actually going to go ahead and do Is we're actually going to put these two bolts in so try not to pull up the axle while the axle is in the hub so at the same time we're gonna just spin this guy in so i'm gonna push up on top and get this guy going make sure that the threads are on this side now since we got the top one in first and you kind of want to retract the bottom all you have to do is pull away or towards or you can actually do that so we're going to push on the strut somewhere and get that going All right, so we got both of those in. And now we're gonna put in our tie rod. Um, let's go ahead and get that guy in. Now this, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down till the castle nut gets a lot in. <laughs> okay, okay. So. So we got right in there. So just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our cotter pin. And if it were, if we're pretty dead on, it should go in pretty nice and smoothly. So we'll just go ahead and 
do that. Now these cat these guys, if you don't have it for a day or two, that's fine. But what what this hat what this does is that it keeps the nut from spinning out. Um, but you do need these. Um, highly recommended. So um, I've seen people use screws, but I got a cutter pin set. Get these at Harbor Freight or AutoZone sells them for like a few bucks for an assortment set. And then you want it to wrap around as much as possible. So you don't hear like a little chatter or any vibration in that. So you kind of want it tight as possible. All right, so next thing, we're gonna go ahead and put our um, our rotor and our caliper. All right, so let's put this guy right in there. So remember how I told you our dust shield might get bent, so this one did, and now's the time to bend it back. So now would be the perfect time to see wherever it's touching on the actual rotor. So you can actually hear it, it's touching. So got one last spot to fix and then we should be going on. I don't hear anything, so it's better to do it now. Later. All right, I'm happy with that. We are pretty dialed in. And so we're gonna go ahead and take off our caliper bracket. I'll just seat this guy right in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this guy back in. Um, so this little notch right here, see this little tab? gets It goes inside here. And then the other piece just kind of hangs around right out there. Well, actually that one goes in first. Then this. And then we're gonna put in our wheel speed sensor. Make sure that these clips go inside the little slots right there. Now, if that does break, you can zip tie those around the struts. All right, so next is gonna be the axle. We do need to torque this. If not, we're gonna destroy the wheel bearing. So let me get the torque specs on that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and torque this. Um, we are gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put something right here um, just to wedge it in there. And then we're gonna torque this down to 217 foot pounds. All right, 
217 or this is 221 ah, still not the end of the day um, but yeah so get that torque down all right so with this piece we are going to go ahead and rotate this guy right over and then we're going to go ahead and hammer this guy in All right, and that should be good right there. And what, what that does is that keeps the nut from actually loosening up over time. And that's pretty much it for that. So now we're pretty much ready to slap on the wheel. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and snug the bottom bolt in and the top bolt, just snug. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to center the wheel. All right, once we get that guy centered in, The reason why I say bolt these down because actually these guys can actually bottom out on the lip of the actual rim and then as they're driving down the road then you'll have a definitely wobble wheel, wobbly wheel. Um, this video helped you out. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future and thanks for watching.